Sir, William Johnson. A pleasure. A good lad, if a bit earnest. I'm told you're putting together an expedition. We believe there's a precursor site in the region. I require your knowledge of the land and its people to find it. Sadly, my research has been stolen. Without it, I'm of no use to you. Then we'll find it. Do you have any leads? My associate, Thomas Hickey, has been making the rounds. He's quite good at loosening tongues. Well, tell me where I can find him. I'll see if I can't speed things up. We've heard rumors of bandits operating from a compound southwest of here. You'll likely find him there. Charles? Sir. We'd best be off. Of course. Tell me about yourself, William. What's to tell? I was born in Ireland to Catholic parents, which I learned early in life severely limited my opportunities. So I converted to Protestantism and journeyed here at the behest of my uncle. But I fear my uncle Peter was not the swiftest of men. He sought to open trade with the Kanyan Gahaga, but chose to build his settlement away from the trade routes instead of on them. I tried to reason with the man, but... <sighs> as I said, not the swiftest. So, I took what little money I'd earned and bought my own little plot of land. I built a home, a farm, a store, and a mill. Humble beginnings, but well situated, which made all the difference. So this is how you came to know the Mohawk? Indeed. And it has proved a valuable relationship. With still no mention from your contacts of the Precursor site? No hidden temple or ancient constructs? Yes and no. Which is to say, they had their fair share of sacred sites. Earthen moans, forest clearings, hidden caves. But nothing matching what you describe. No strange metals. No odd glows. Hmm. It is well hidden. Even to them, it seems. But cheer up, my friend. You'll have your precursor treasure. I swear it. To our success, then. And soon. There you are. My thanks, Master Kenway. Now, tell me what it is you need. The images on this amulet, are they familiar to you? Perhaps one of the tribes has shown you something similar. It appears Kanyan Gahaga in origin. Can you trace it to a specific location? I need to know where it came from. With my research returned, perhaps. Let me see what I can do. Thomas! Whoa. Rent yourself a room. And a bath as well. I suspect we'll be here for a while. Evening, gentlemen. <clears throat> Charming. Oh, peace, Charles. He'll grow on you. Oi! Catherine, you fussock! Get back here! Daddy needs a drink. How fares the search? Maths and maps are not cutting it. What of your local contacts? We'll need to earn their trust before they'll share what they know. <sighs> oh, oh. I have an idea on how we might be affecting that. There's a man who's taken to enslaving natives. Rescue them, and they allow us. <laughs> Do you know where they're being held? Afraid not. <laughs> Benjamin Church will. He's a finder and a fixer. He's also on your list. And there I was, wondering whom I might solicit next. Well done. This business with Silas confuses me. If Britain stands any chance of pushing back the French, they must ally with the natives, not enslave them. Silas is loyal only to his purse. That his actions harm the crown is irrelevant. So long as there are buyers for his product. He'll continue to procure it. All the more reason to stop him, then. My days are spent in Congress with the locals, attempting to convince them that we're the ones they should trust, that the French are merely using them as tools to be abandoned once they've won. Your words must lose their strength. 
when held against the reality of Silas' actions. I've tried to explain that he does not represent us. But he wears the red coat. He commands a fort. I must appear to them either a liar or a fool. Likely both. Take heart, brother. When we deliver them his head, they'll know your words were true. What have we here? Familiar. Where have I seen you before? That wasn't very nice. Let me go! <laughs> Listen to that. He knows English. Small for savage. He's spirited too! We have questions for your elders. Only tell us where your village is, boy, and you can go. Best do as he asks, child. I could snap your neck, you know. A little more pressure and pop. The sad little flame of your life extinguished. You are a nothing, a speck of dust. You and all your ilk, living in the dirt like animals, oblivious to the true ways of the world. The wiser among you recognize the shape of the future. They throw themselves at our feet and beg mercy. But not you, it seems. No. You cling desperately to your ways, too ignorant to know your folly. But I am not unkind. And so I spare you, that you may carry word to your people. Let them know the sooner we are given what we seek, the sooner you can return to your pathetic, empty lives. A fair trade, is it not? What is your name? <laughs> Charles Lee. Why do you ask? So I can find you. <laughs> I look forward to it. We've done it! Save the last one for you. We get out of here, huh? Peace! Peace! Have I not always been an advocate? Have I not always sought to protect you from harm? If you wish to protect us, then give us arms, muskets and horses that we might defend ourselves. War is not the answer. We remember, Stanwicks. We remember you moved the borders. Even today your men dig up the land, showing no regard for those who live upon it. Your words are honeyed, but false. We are not here to negotiate, nor to sell. We are here to tell you and yours to leave these lands. So be it. I offered you an olive branch, and you knocked it from my hand. Perhaps you'll respond better to the sword. Are you threatening us? Yes. Oh, no. What have you done? Ensured an end to your schemes. You sought to claim these lands for the Templars. Aye. 
that we might protect them. Do you think that good King George lies awake at night, hoping that no harm comes to his native subjects? Or that the people of the city care one whit about them? Oh, sure. The colonists are happy to trade when they need food or shelter or a bit of extra padding for their armies. But when the walls of the city constrict, when there's crops that need soil, when there's... when there's no more enemy to fight, we'll see how kind the people are then. The colonists have no quarrel with the Iroquois. Not yet. But they will. This is the way of the world. In time, they'll turn. I... I could have stopped it. I could have saved you all. You speak of salvation, but you were killing them. Aye, because they would not listen. And so, it seems, neither will you. I was not a man who was 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 a